Good afternoon, chemists. Welcome to week 12. So I am going to do some presenting like this. Uh, Mr. Wozniak hopefully can watch the chat for me um, as I cannot see the chat. Um, so let's just get down to announcements. Week 12, um, week 12 is extra long week, meaning that all of our work is due on Tuesday, November 24th. So um, not, so you don't have to worry about getting anything in on Friday. You have until the 24th to get your work in for week 12. And because we have an extra long week, we have no e-sessions next week. So that means um, we're going to cover what we need to for week 12 th today. Um, and then there's no new material next week because we're still in week 12. Um, after that, you guys have Thanksgiving break. So that means that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are days off of school. You are not expected to log on and do any work. However, my exception to that is if you are behind in chemistry or any other course for that matter, um, it would be a great idea to use the Thanksgiving break to help yourself get caught up. And the reason it's a great time to do that is that there is no new work coming in. So with that being said, it's a great time to get caught up. And that way you might want to log on and get some um, of that past work done and submitted. Okay. Um, after Thanksgiving break, uh, teachers are going to start to compile or um, work on those progress reports. And progress reports are going to be um, during that week 13. So I know a lot of us said that, you know, at the end of week 12, we would update target grades. However, I think it's going to be more like week 13. Um, so that way teachers themselves can um, grade what you guys have done during Thanksgiving break and um, through last week or through next week, Tuesday and have then update your grade, your target grades and have them be current and align with your progress reports, okay? It also got me thinking, what traditions, or maybe you guys are gonna start something new this year um, because you can't do your old traditions, um, for Thanksgiving, are you looking forward to? So for me, I absolutely love getting up and having, um, making pumpkin pie and having that in the oven and just the smell of the, of the day is just that pumpkin pie smell, um, turkey smell, all of those wonderful foods that go along with Thanksgiving. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Put place in the chat, what are some things that you guys are really looking forward to? Oh my gosh, so let's see. Oh my gosh, seafood. So I have a friend who does like lobster tails for Thanksgiving and I often thought, wow, that is kind of a cool idea. I think I'm thinking of using that idea for New Year's Eve. Oh my gosh, Emily, so exciting to see your brother. A break, yes, that's awesome. Um, everyone, I think, could use a little a little break here. 
Oh, you get to see your aunt. Seeing different family members that sometimes you don't often see is pretty awesome too. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, yay, your sister will be home and the pies, yum. I know pies, you heard me say that is one of my all-time favorite things about Thanksgiving are as pumpkin pie specifically. However, um, I think my sister sometimes gets um, a French silk pie from uh, Baker Square, I think, and that too is pretty spectacular. Oatmeal pie. That is super interesting. I've never heard of that, but it sounds absolutely delicious. I'm a big oatmeal fan, to be honest. Oh, but it's nut free. Very cool, Samantha. Mmm, apple pie. Yes. Yum, yum, yum. I don't know that I've heard of cheese on top of an apple pie. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I'm so excited. I just love asking these questions because I get a little insight into um, you and your families, and I just love learning about that. All right, Jaden, that's cool. So excited. Thank you guys so much for sharing. So I'm going to go through the um, what we have on tap for this week, okay? So, oh my gosh, Emily, I'm sure you are. And Emily, we're all celebrating that Emily has moved to the next level in uh, ice skating. She did pass her... Uh, test last week. Remember, she was very nervous about it and a little stressed. And so I'm sure that is part of the Thanksgiving Day celebration. Woo -woo! Um, so I want to go through what we're going to have, what's going to happen this week. And remember that this stuff is due on November 24th. So that is a week from um, yesterday. So the first thing that comes up is for us to read pages 165 through 169. Um, you are going to need to open up your notebook. You'll be using page 21, and you're going to create a cheat chart, or you can click on the student chart here. And this is what it brings up. So that's what it looks like. Or you can just write this in your notebook. i got to find my... Okay, and um, there are two videos to help you visualize what's happening between elements and bonding, and those videos are located in the resource folder. At the very bottom, if you scroll down to the very bottom of this week, there's a folder named resource folder, and in there I do have some extra resources, some more visualization about what is happening between these two types of bonding, um, ionic and covalent. And so... With ionic, we're really talking about a metal and a non-metal um, making a compound together. And what generally happens is that the non-metal is going to take the electrons from the metal. And so that will satisfy both of them, making either um, taking away either valence electrons and giving them a at zero electrons in that outer shell, which makes them, which makes the metals happy. And then those electrons then fill the outer orbit of the nonmetal, making them happy. And so they are now in, in this compound together. And then we have a covalent bond. And in a covalent bond, we're really talking about two nonmetals creating a compound together, in which case the electrons are going to be shared. And so those are the two main differences in this bonding. And it's always sometimes good to get a, visual, a visualization about what that looks like or what might be happening. So please note that there are some extra 
resources for you in that resource folder, including um, two videos about ionic and covalent bonding. Once you have read that, um, then you are going to click on our, our formative for this week. And our formative for this week is an ionic and covalent bond assignment. Um, this is a pretty straightforward assignment, to be honest. Um, I'm going to click here and show you. So you have part one. Part one has a video right here on ionic bonding. And there's some essential questions here for you. And as you go through that video, you are going to see um, ways in which to write answers. I tried giving diagrams for you guys to use as well. And so that is, you're going to stop on slide 21 of ionic bonding. So that first part is ionic bonding. And then the second part is covalent bonding. So if you click here, you're going to get another video or a video from Khan Academy. And when you are watching this video with Khan Academy, you're going to fill in a concept map. Um, I have the concept map down here. Again, if you click on this and hit edit, you then will be able to um, add your, um, your things about covalent bonding here. And then you can just hit save and close, and there it is for you. And then you're going to write a description of covalent bonds. So I'm asking you to define them, to describe it, to explain it, give examples of covalent bonding. And again, you will see a video here. You can also use the notes from your reading uh, to create this concept map as well. You don't necessarily have to watch um, or click on, you don't actually have to read this article about covalent bonding, you could use that. Um, Mr. Wozniak is absolutely correct. Um, takeaways are you putting things in your own words about what you are learning. And the more you can do that, the more it helps solidify more into your brain um, what is actually happening so that when you're asked to use it, um, you can um, up start applying it. Um, it also allows for Mr. Wozniak and I to see if you put some takeaways there and they're kind of off the mark. It allows us then to contact you and just kind of um, re um, iterate some things that might be wrong in those takeaways. And that is a great thing for us because then we can catch it before it, it grows larger and then you start to get other things wrong um, as the weeks go on. So that is your, that is your formative. Um, that's your formative for this week. And in that formative, you are going to complete it and you can just really make a copy of that formative, complete it and then submit it as a PDF file um, PDF files seem to work most consistently for us in our um, in our Blackboard. Ooh, I just that thought escaped me. So that is a much appreciated if you can just do the PDF file. Okay, so with um, that is all that's that's there then for this week. Um, do you guys have any questions or clarifying questions? Like we've had a couple um, on the either the reading or the formative work. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of a lot of no's right now, which is completely fine. Um, if you feel pretty confident in what you are doing, then you can um, leave the e-session. We wish you a very happy Thanksgiving break and hoping that you get to participate in the traditions or the new traditions that you are excited for.
Yes, may your turkey be be done <laughs> for sure. All right. That's all I have for you guys. So have an awesome Thanksgiving. And we will see you guys here on December 2nd will be our next e-session. Bye, guys. Maddie or Adrian, do you guys have any questions? Maddie, do you have any questions? <laughs>